All right, Shalom. First and foremost, giving all praise, glory, and honor that's due to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachah Hakwadash, double honors to the elders and apostles of Grimmillstone who rule well. Peace and blessings to the 144,000 and the hopeful elect. Shalom, Barakatam. And this is going to be a, a lesson just rolling through the spirit um, on a few topics that are going on. Um, there is a lot going on. You know, if you haven't been paying attention, this, uh, this Frankenstein uh, set of hurricanes that they had, which one. <laughs> Which one of them was 800 fucking miles wide Excuse my French uh, Salakia uh, And the other one Got a <laughs> The eye of it is like this big But it's it's approaching You know damn near 200 miles per hour You know In terms of winds Now anything that big that high That, that used to be like tornado winds Now the trade off of a tornado versus a hurricane Is that Tornadoes have a small you know area of destruction but the but what it destroys is much 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 more powerful all right it doesn't stretch out for miles and miles and miles but this hurricane that stretches out for hundreds of miles you know it's it's approaching like tornado level all right so you know a lot of these things are gonna get uh uh are gonna are gonna uh build on top of each other man you know i was just thinking about it too when i saw some images of it you know i'll try to uh uh, get some footage of it here <clears throat> but uh but a lot of it is gonna un it's gonna it's gonna wake up a lot of things out there man whenever you disturb wildlife like that you know you're gonna have all kind of creatures that lose their habitats bears you know uh, uh, uh mountain lions bear bobcats various creatures and even the cryptids man i believe you know some of those spooky creatures which are which we're in spooky season for america but you know, this is about to be a permanent spooky season. And I, you know, I may do a lesson on that later, but uh, those creatures as well too, man. You know, these people going missing, you know, they say it's in the hundreds, but it's, it's in the thousands, man. Now, Esau literally has no idea what he does because he's got satellites. I mean, he can pretty much see everything in 4K from right above where everybody is and, and have a means to rescue them. But what is everybody crying out about, man? What is everybody in an uproar about? You see, they're in an uproar because the the National Guard, FEMA, the local police, they're telling people that not only can we not get to them, but other civilians, so-called Good Samaritans, are not able to to uh, use their resources to go get them. The guy that had the helicopter, they said, we're going to arrest your ass, you know, if you try to go rescue people. So that should tell you everything you need to know about, you know, what's going on on the hurricane on the hurricane front all right and it says let me go to second Ezra's. okay um starting at verse chapter 15 verse 14 all right it says woe to the world and them that dwell therein for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh all right so the sword is near all right and disasters like this the only thing really keeping the peace is that people can still feed themselves and and uh, there's still first responders still going on. But in scenarios like that, look, those first responders, look, if those towns get to the point where they can't get food, you know, you don't want to be a police officer in that area, man, or a firefighter. Okay, those people will eat you, man. All right, they stranded up in those mountains. They got their own, their kids up there stranded, you know. And so wait till this wait till this blows up. All right, and and and, and then it ripples out. Okay. It's gonna it's gonna get really really bad, all right. And that and that's people start bringing the sword out, okay. And people go into survival mode, you know. It says, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. And America is the most armed country in the world. There are more guns here than there are people, okay. And there are guns everywhere, okay. So, all it all this place really needs is a reason. You know how people say, give me a reason? Well, Esau and, and the American government is about to give everybody a reason, all right? And it says, for their destruction shall, for Salakia, verse 16, uh, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another, and they shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power, all right? And, and course of the actions stand in their power. That means that we're, we're gonna decide what we're gonna do 
okay? FEMA's talking about you can't go past there, you know? And then they're telling you that they can't go into the area of the zone where, where, uh, where it's been destroyed. Well, you know, people are saying, wait a minute, that's your job. Your job is to be able to go into areas uh, of destroyed areas and, and, and rescue people, you know? And then they have the audacity to offer you $750, you know? That's, that's the kind of foolishness going on, man. All right? And it says, Behold, saith the Most High, I will call together. Um, nope, Salakia. Verse 17. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Okay? So this is just a little bit of a sneak peek of what's going to be going on. And the only refuge you're going to get, because see, ultimately, Esau doesn't want people in these rural towns, man, where you can have your own land and farms and things of that nature. He does not want that, you know. Kill Gates is over there buying up uh, all kind of farmland, okay? He wants you in the cities clustered. He wants you to have to go through interstate highways to go across the country. He wants narrow pathways. He doesn't want things free and open he wants everything locked down all right that's what he wants okay and it says for because of their pride the city shall be troubled the houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid now one woman i saw on youtube uh i think her name is nani or something like that she was bringing out how a lot of the towns that got destroyed in this uh in this hurricane helene were sundown towns okay now if you know what a sundown town is as a matter of fact i'm gonna see what the ai has to say about the sundown town i've been using ai a lot more <laughs> what are sundown towns see if it knows <clears throat> sundown towns were communities in the united states that during the late 19th and 20th centuries enforced policies either official or informal that excluded african-americans and other minority groups see how see how they're, they're sugarcoating it number one they're saying they they existed no they still exist okay and then number two they didn't just exclude all right if they caught your ass out there your ass is going missing okay it says these policies often required non-white individuals to leave the town by sunset, hence the term sundown, okay? These towns use the com combination of local laws, intimidation, and violence to maintain their all-white populations and signs at town entrances, sometimes explicitly warning minorities to leave before nightfall, all right? So you had a lot of them in the South and North Carolinas, all right? And if you know the trajectory of the East Coast of the... Uh, of the hurricane of the, of the east coast it went through florida it went through georgia it went through south carolina south carolina and north carolina all right they got they got tore up man all right now now coincidentally you know i find it strange or a coincidence that what's next if you go just a little bit further north of north carolina that didn't get hit Oh, that's, that's the Virginias and DC area, okay? All of a sudden, this 800, <laughs> this 800 mile wide hurricane, it didn't destroy DC. You know, they got some rain, but their towns aren't, aren't, aren't flooded over there. Their entire bridges that are just gone, man. Their streets that just got washed away, the entire street, all right? And so now what they're saying, now that Hurricane Milton it's about to hit Florida. What they said was Helene left a lot of debris. They got to pick up a lot of debris very quickly. Why? Because debris turns into projectiles, okay? And projectiles do the most damage in a hurricane. You just got branches and trees and, and various garage doors laying around. And another hurricane is going to come through and pick all of that up and start flinging them, man. All right. <laughs> so that's what that's what Milton is getting ready to do, man. You know, so so they're trying to pick up all the debris as fast as they can. You know, we're all, all before what election season, man. All right. Anyway, already 10 minutes, man. Damn.
just on this, this, this damn hurricane. Let me see here. Um, see, Trump accuses Biden of neglecting uh, hurricane survivors while giving Ukraine billions. And see, this is going to contribute to the uproar of the people. And that's kind of the point that I wanted to, to highlight on. They're gonna they're gonna gaslight the hell out of these people, man. Okay, they're gonna say, well, well, we need that. If they don't, if we don't help those people overseas, then that war is gonna come over here. But they don't tell you that they're instigating all the wars. They don't tell you that they're the number one radicalizer of of all so-called extreme extremist violence. They started all all of these groups: the Al Qaeda, the the the, the, the Taliban, the, uh, the the ISIS. Uh, 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 even uh, even Hamas and Hezbollah, all of these groups, when you look them up, they all at one point in time either started or got funded by who? The West. Okay? The West or one of their allies. They funded all of them, man. Okay? So, so, so when you talk about radicalism and extreme, you got to look at the root cause of this thing, man. You know? People and people will know these know this information and, and still go up there and vote and just think that America is what they tell you it is on television. It's not, man. It, it, this is a this is a colony, okay, that turned into a plantation. All right, to farm productivity out of people, so the elite on the global stage can have military muscle, man. Because that's what America is. It's the military arm of the of the th of the triangle offense they got. Okay, you read Revelation, the 16th chapter, you got the three unclean spirits that came out like frogs. America is one of them, man. Or the, uh, I should say, uh, the capital of America, you know, because America is really a, a, a big ass, you know, melting pot. But the military order comes out of America, okay? The financial, it comes out of London, all right? And we know the, uh, the left-hand priesthood comes out of the Vatican, okay? All right, it says the Brookings Institution thinks it's a good idea to censor satire. So on one time, they're, they're saying they're gonna, get, they're gonna gaslight you. And then on that back end, they're gonna go down this route of censorship where you can't say anything about it. So they're getting ready to take this thing, man, all right? They're getting ready to take it. Let me go to that in Romans. Romans 12, Romans 13, Romans 13 and 11, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake, to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed, all right? So what else is left besides the karagma? You know, go down the list. World War III is basically started, okay? At least the posture and the footing of it is there, and we already know who's who. We already know the sides. We're at the point now, you know, at, at a certain point when you watch like the NBA or the NFL, you know, there's a certain point where, you know, you're in the playoffs, but you still don't know who's gonna, who's gonna play in the NBA Finals or who's gonna be in the Super Bowl, you know? It's only a certain amount of games have to be played and other teams have to get eliminated before you know who's going to be going up against who. Well, we're at that point now where we know who's going to be in this Super Bowl, who's going to be in this, in this third world war. We know who the allies are. We know who the enemies are. We know where the allegiances are and, and the violence has already started. So what else is there left? Okay, they're going to roll out this Karagma very soon, man, you know? And they're doing it right right before your very eyes, man. You, you're supposed to be watching for these things and and and, uh, and warn the people, okay? So everybody that's in this spirit of debating, and that's that's the thing that's in your heart, that's the thing that you that, that gets you out of bed in the morning, you know, that's your motivation is, is cutting the Christian. The Lord is gonna kill you, man. All right. If you're following men like that and you haven't repent, you haven't repented and came out of that, the Lord's gonna kill you too. The Lord don't care, man. Okay? He doesn't care. 
you're guilty by association. All right? Remember Ezekiel the ninth chapter. He say, and, and, and let your eye spare, let your eye have no pity. Okay, <laughs> what does that mean? It doesn't mean if you meant well, okay? You have to do well, all right? Anyway, let me go, let me go back. Up, uh, up, uh, the largest supplier of drinking water in the US has been hacked. Now, do you see how fragile this place is? Something as precious and essential and fundamental as water. It's all vulnerable to fucking electronics, man. Do you see this? Electronics is vulnerable, makes something like drinking water vulnerable. That's how, that's how, uh, uh, that's how delicate this place is, man. That's how we know when we go to Isaiah 47, I'll go there real quick and I'll probably end it there. That's how, that's how we know that this place is America, man, because look how delicate this place is. You got water can be, can be, you know, people are going to die of thirst, man, because of electronics. Okay. Something that comes natural, you know, out of the earth, you got groundwater, you got rain. And there's not enough competence in America. As, as wise as America is, it doesn't have enough wisdom to not let something like water be vulnerable to something like computer hacking. You think about it, they, whether something is hacked or not should have nothing to do with water. Okay, but what did the scriptures say? He's going to make the wise men of this world seem foolish. <laughs> All right. see you go to it let's see I believe that was in yeah I'm gonna go he speaks about wisdom and teaming Isaiah 49, I mean, Jeremiah 49 and 7 concerning Edom, thus saith the Lord Jehovah of hosts, is wisdom no more in teeming? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? Because they're going to look at you as the most powerful nation, the richest nation. You got all of this land in America, but you got 600,000 plus people that don't even have homes. You have a housing shortage on 2 billion acres of land, man, 3 million square miles. You still have a homeless problem, okay? You still have gonna have people that, that die from, from lack of access to water, man. When you have some of the biggest rivers in the world here, the Mississippi River is one of the biggest rivers in the world, that alone. Then you got the Ohio River. Then you got the Missouri River, which is huge. Then you got the Colorado River that's huge. And, that, and that's why the scriptures say, in due time, I will set up one that's profitable. <laughs> All right, and so rock the tenth chapter. This place is ripe for the taking, man. This place, these people are dumb, they're stupid, and they're proud at the same time. So the, this this is the perfect candidate for for thermonuclear destruction. All right, and the Lord is going to make good on that promise. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to make good on the promise of America being destroyed. The destruction of America is inevitable. So all you guys trying to hitch your wagons to this place, trying to think that there's some kind of way that this is just a downturn, that this we're going to get over this and and then this, this and that. Or you talking about voting? You're going to die, man. All right? Rightfully so. Isaiah 47 and 1, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon, sit on the ground, there is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Yeah, this is going to make, you know, as, as, as the saying goes, you know, uh, hard times make strong men. 
and and uh, uh, and good men. I'm sorry. And strong men make good times, and good times make weak men. So America has been in that cycle where the good times, all right, have been making weak men. So you have an entire generation of weak men. All right. So what's going to happen? Bad times. Okay. And then the only thing that's going to be left are strong men here. And those men are going to bitch up. When they see the plagues hit this place, they're going to bitch up like women. The only men that are going to be a, a, a viable option are going to be the elect. That's Isaiah 13. I'm, I will make a man more precious than fine gold. That's how he's going to do it. How's he going to make a man more precious than fine gold? By mass death, man. That's how he's going to do it. All of these women that are out of order, Akim, don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. The Lord got something for that pride, okay? You ain't going to have to, you ain't going to need no game in Jacob's trouble. Trust me. You ain't going to, you ain't going to need the little pickup lines. You ain't going to need to have the fresh shoes. You ain't going to need nothing. All right? A brother could be five foot one autistic whatever his ailments are and he's gonna be pulling them why because if he's if the lord ordained him to be a member of the elect then guess what he's gonna be more precious than any other man here okay you could be missing teeth bald whatever it is if you are a man in the lord whatever ailments you got on this side you're gonna be good man all right you think the women, the standards are, are, are crazy high? Watch how low they get, okay? Which we're not going to be low men in, in real value, but according to this society's value, you know? Let me go back to Isaiah 47 and 1. It says, take the millstones and grind mill, uncover the, the locks, make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers, Okay? It says, thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yeah, thy shame shall be seen. And what I believe is going to happen is it's going to come out what, what these hurricanes really are. Now, you go look up to the fire up in Lahaina or Lahaina, Hawaii. Same story. Not letting anybody get rescued. Not letting anybody come in. And it turns out they got prime real estate there. It turns out those pesky aboriginals those pesky natives that lived there, those Japhites, okay, didn't want to leave. All right, same thing now. You got quartz. We found out those mountains, mountains usually have a lot of treasure in them, man. Most mountains got, if you dig into them, they got gold, all kind of minerals into them. Now, in, in the Carolinas, you got something called the Tar Heels. They were known for their coal, all right, production. But coal makes diamonds as well, man in the right conditions so you know the speculation is there's lots of minerals there and and too many uh toothless edomites on on mountain lands that's been there for for generations and they don't want to leave well we're gonna but it's all gonna come out is the point all right He says, thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man, okay? And that's going to apply to the elect brothers that are here that have to endure the time of Jacob's trouble. Whether we get spiritual powers or the Lord does it on our behalf or he does miracles on our behalf, you're not going to be dealing with average men, you know? Like, this, like yesterday morning, I woke up with a headache, you know? Would he, would, you know, could these bodies are, 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 are just through, you know, you're not going to, we're not, you're not going to be dealing with those types of individuals. You're going to have to deal with you. How about shoot me? How a shot? The Lord is going to stretch out his hand. Like the scriptures say with a, with a, with a mighty arm and a stretched out hand, he's going to deliver us out of this place. That's what you're going to be dealing with Esau. Okay. Anyway, I'll end it there, man. Uh, Lord willing, I can come back later with a different lesson, another lesson to follow up. And uh, till next time, on to the next. Shalom.